To Brussels now, where NATO defence ministers are meeting for a second day. They've been focusing on ensuring that Kyiv has enough ammunition to push back an expected new Russian offensive. They also discussed ramping up national defence spending targets as a result of the war in Ukraine. US Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke to reporters afterwards. Russia is c continues to pour large numbers of additional people into the fight. And those people are ill-trained and ill-equipped. And because of that, we see them uh, incurring a lot of casualties. And we'll probably con continue to see that going forward. That's, uh, that's their strength. They have a lot of people. Our goal is to make sure that we give Ukraine uh, additional capabilities so that they can be not only be uh, marginally successful, they can be decisive on the, uh, on the battlefield in, in their upcoming offensive. Lloyd Austin there. Well, for more on this meeting of NATO defence ministers, I spoke a short time ago to France 24's Dave Keating, who's in Brussels. We didn't get any big announcements, and that's noticeable because when he came into the summit yesterday, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg was really warning that Ukraine is, is in danger of running out of ammunition. He says right now Ukraine is going through more ammunition than the Western allies can provide, and there are severe shortages among Western allies, even domestically. Uh, so he was really urging that new defense contracts be signed to provide that ammunition to the NATO allies so that they, in turn, can provide it to Ukraine. So the big question was whether we were going to get any big defense contract provision announcements over these two days. There hasn't really been anything major. The U.S. had some news, uh, but really I think this was setting up the urgency and then maybe we'll see some of those deals uh, to come. One thing that was really clearly not on the table today was planes for Ukraine. So yesterday when Ukrainian President Zelensky was touring European capital he was pleading for Western allies to send planes to Ukraine. But early on in this summit, uh, Secretary General Stoltenberg really ruled that out, saying, yes, we'll talk about it, but that so far in the future and the urgent need right now is to get the things already agreed, so tanks, uh, anti-aircraft systems, and most importantly, ammunition over to Ukraine. One movement that I have detected here is it's seeming more and more likely that Finland may be about to join NATO without Sweden. Uh, of course, Turkey is holding up Sweden's bid to join the bloc. Uh, when asked whether NATO's position as this has changed, Secretary General Stoltenberg said in his press conference just an hour ago that uh, it's not up to NATO, that basically Turkey has two ratification documents. If they choose to ratify only Finland, then Finland's in. Uh, and the, so really this is up to Turkey. But then he also suggested actually this is up to Finland because the final ratification has to come from the Finnish parliament. So it's still possible that Finland, out of solidarity, will say, no, we're not joining NATO without Sweden. Um, but people I've talked to here think that's a rather unlikely scenario. In any event, it's clear that NATO won't stand in the way. But Stoltenberg is going to try to convince Turkey. He's headed to Turkey later today. Tomorrow, he will meet with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and try to convince him to stop blocking Sweden's entry bid.